So I was going to quickly talk about 20 amps, I'll whiz through this because uh, there is some tea there in the urns, but um, 20 apps for academics. So for those of you who have got smart tablet devices, these are things that um, you may not know are available on a mobile device, or well, when you do get a mobile device, then you'll be able to get them. Now, I've got, a, a, um, I've got an iPad, so these are all iOS on here, but many of these are Android com you know, compatible as well. Um, and I think pretty much all of them are free. Um, and um, a lot of them may be tools that you are using already and just don't realize there is a mobile device. So I try and, part of what I try and do, I'm particularly interested in, is trying to get people to get better use out of these devices because they're not cheap. You know, even to get one through the university is about nearly £400 and, you know, they can do a whole lot more than, than, than email, etc. So, um, so the first one is, this is sort of like uh, Mendeley, which we kind of teach all our students in Shah. Uh, and Mendeley is available as a mobile app, it's a reference management tool and some staff use Mendeley, we are uh, pretty much moved over to EndNote um, but, but, but um, Mendeley is a fantastic tool aside from the Elsevier connection um, and it allows you to kind of access your references on the go it is available on Android, they officially made their Android app available last year and there is an unofficial Amazon Kindle app as well called Kinsync it is really good, you know, if you are wanting to manage references and you're out and about and you've got your mobile device, you can use this and it works with um, something that was created by a Mendeley API called Papership by a bunch of guys in Germany, which mirrors your Mendeley collection, so if you have PDFs as part of your Mendeley reference database, Papership will sync it up so you can actually access and open and read your PDFs on the go and annotate them, so it's a really useful tool. Um, Nice Guidance, All Nice Guidance is available as an app, it's a free app, so you can go in there, you can look by particular kind of, uh, kind of drill down to the, to the guidance via, via various means, they have a little function where they put updated and new guidance, so if you want to get like the latest guidance you can just go in there, in effect it's, it's like an app website, it's all hyperlinked, you can move around, you can bookmark things and save them, so it's quite a useful one to have if this is something that you want to refer to. Trello is used quite a lot on the university campus, I think there's quite a few hundred people use this for project management, it's something you can use as an individual, it's something you can use as a group and the way it works is, is you create not like a mood board but like a project board um, of things that you can move around, so all these are kind of drag and droppable and you can share them with people, so you can, if you're doing a project and there's various things you want to do and you want to prioritise it then Trello is a very good desktop tool to use but then if you get the app it kind of all syncs up so you can continue to manage your projects on the go so it's one worth, worth having perhaps you know, for sort of like small group projects etc and for people who like to work with lists you know, I, I've got various colleagues who work purely off lists, and that's you know that's a really good way for them to work. So that this would just do the same job, or there's things like Wonderlist or Todoist or Remember the Milk. So they they all do very similar things. Uh, Meerkat I've used on a few occasions, and it's quite good. And I'd used it today if I wasn't using my iPad here. You can basically just turn up if you've got a Twitter account open up Meerkat or there's Periscope which is the official Twitter one and it will live broadcast to a public forum, it will tweet out to, to your followers that you are broadcasting. I've used this a couple of times at conferences so I've actually gone, the hardest thing is trying to get the iPad to sit in the right place to pick you up but I've actually done this at a couple of conferences and dropped it just for the sake of it, presented and people can just tune in if they want and watch me present. I was part of the 24 hour Inspire um, charity thing at the university the week before and I ran this pop-up radio station and I thought I'll meerkat it as well as the radio stream and over the course of running it we had around a thousand people come in and watch the broadcast and uh, pretty much for most of the time we were having around 40 people watching it at the time so it's, it's, it's well worth having a, having a look at. Adobe Voice um, which is now called D Adobe Spark, sadly this is only iOS as far as I'm aware um, it is free and it makes brilliant animation videos, so if you've seen my research hack videos or the learn hack videos that I've made, they've all been made in this. I basically write a quick script which takes five minutes and you, you storyboard it and it has loads and loads of royalty free images and, and, and um, kind of 
very fancy clip art and it makes very effective films where you can change the theme, the music is all royalty free. Uh, so if you know what you're talking about and you're in a good room, you can make a video in around 20 minutes, 25 minutes, save it to your camera roll and upload it to YouTube. So um, a very, very good tool. Um, anyone who uses Twitter and you have a tablet device, I would always say use something like Hootsuite. So what Hootsuite does, it takes that one stream of content and puts it into filters. So if you're at a conference, you can create a stream based on the hashtag for the conference and put it into Hootsuite and then you can just watch the conference conversation go on. If you are particularly interested in a topic, say you're interested in say um, altmetrics, you could do that and you can see every tweet that comes down from that. So it breaks up the conversation into lots of little conversations that are easier to digest when you're on the, on the go. If using a desktop machine, then TweetDeck is very, very good. Um, something we don't use enough, and that is not a very flattering photograph, but look at the records. Um, this is Google Hangouts, which you know available again on mobile device. So to be able to have like Hangouts, you know, as long as you've got a web web sort of um, connection. Uh, and I did see something. I tweeted something this morning that possibly they're looking at making Edge Roam a bit more user friendly for academics out and about because we're kind of tied to institutions and I think there's, there's maybe some work to improve our, our kind of access to, to the internet but um, it is really good I, I know people here who've supervised PhD students I know Aki um, supervised her PhD student in London over Google Hangouts and you can do this on your tablet device it means you're not tied to finding a room finding a space if your conversation isn't particularly private you could go and sit in Regent Court and have your hangout as long as you're not saying anything you know that you want overheard um, I could uh, just a different way of doing presentations so this is what I'm presenting off here I'm presenting off my iPad on Haiku deck so I pretty much know what I'm going to talk about because it's a visual prompt for me but it makes a quick simple presentation this presentation didn't take long it's actually based on one that I've done several times that I just go in and make a new version and change it accordingly so it works very well for when I want to talk about apps for 20 minutes I can make 20 slides that just look like that the only problem with Haiku Deck is it, with the free account you can't export the slides so I can't go and put them onto PowerPoint um, I've got to pay a premium to actually get them out um, a really good one for anyone who still kind of struggles, and this is very good for telling our students or for any students who struggle with Harvard Referencing, is the Harvard Referencing Handbook, and it was created by the University of Lincoln over in Lincolnshire. Because um, I thought it was the University of Lincoln, like Alabama or something, but it's, 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 it's just over the border. And uh, they've made a very, very nice app that basically allows you to choose whatever you want to reference. So I want to reference a book, I want to reference a data set, I want to reference a performance if I was in the arts and humanities. And it shows me how to do it. It breaks it all down. Now I want to reference a book by one author, two authors, three authors. I want to edit, uh, reference an edited book. It'll tell you everything. So it's a very, very nice, lightweight, effective uh, way of just kind of reminding yourself perhaps when you, you have to reference something you're not used to. Medline has um, an app called Medline Unbound, so you get access to 24 million PubMed journal articles on, on our device. So provided that it kind of syncs up, you should be able to kind of access things that we have here in the university. So again, it's just another one to back up what you've already got. You know, we have access to Medline. Um, the fact that you can kind of get this on your mobile device just gives you a bit more flexibility um, just to kind of continue doing your work. Uh, explain everything isn't free it's about three pounds but it is a very very good app um, what it does it used to be called explain the website what it does is it opens up a web browser on your tablet device and then you can hit a record and it will record your voice and it will record you navigating around the website and you can draw on it and do all sorts and students in the med school have used this to kind of annotate uh, things like anatomy so again, it's something useful perhaps to get students to think about are there kind of web-based things that they, you want them to annotate and make a video of, and then you can export that video out. So again, another very, very good and simple tool to use, and, and say, sadly, it's not free, but it's not, it's not particularly expensive. Something we have at the university, and Graham McAloney will talk about this in two weeks' time, is the iTunes U, the um, Apple's a university kind of platform for, for podcasts and, and, and video casts and, and such like. Um, iTunes U is very good in that unlike things like Google and other particular platforms, it isn't blocked in certain countries. So you can access iTunes U in China. 
So, you know, we have a large Chinese student population here. Um, so making content for iTunes U is, is well worth well, you know, if we make video content, YouTube is a very good place to put it because it gets lots of exposure. And I think the university will, at some point, be moving possibly to Kaltura. Um, but um, iTunes U, we do have people in the university who can get your content hosted for you, uh, and then you can make collections uh, and people can subscribe to it. And again, it's a good way to supplement your own learning and and have a look what's out there because you know all the big universities are on there, all the big hitters are on there. So there's an, an incredible amount of content. Um, one of the best apps, one of the apps that is actually better than the desktop app is the Turnitin app in my opinion. So if you have any marking to do, um, rather than kind of sit at your desk and work through six, seven essays, dissertations, you know, you can take yourself off to a nice comfortable space, a, you know, a cafe, do it at home, sit in the garden, you can, you can annotate, read the students' essays, you can leave audio feedback, it used to be three minutes audio feedback, which is always really good to do, leave students actually a bit of kind of verbal feedback rather than just the text. You can, it's got all the uh, rubric in there for the marking, so it does everything that Turnitin does, but it just makes marking actually a little bit more relaxing uh, and a bit more, a bit more pleasurable to do. So um, it is one that I would strongly suggest that people kind of get on if they have any marking to do. Uh, browsing, we still have this don't we, the university, yes, browsing is, um, it is basically like a magazine shelf as you get things like Zeit and, and, and the news shelf that you get with your tablet devices. What browsing does, it mirrors our University of Sheffield's journal. So you can go in there and you can search specifically for journals, you can favourite them, put them onto your bookmark, onto your shelf. You can then open up the journals, you can open up PDFs, you can do things like email yourself the details, share them as well. So again, it's a good way for browsing the latest journals. So if you, instead of what we would have done years ago, go down to the library and get, actually look at the journal or, or look, get the table of contents sent to us, we can have it all in one place. We can curate our own journal collection um, using the app. Uh, PubGet is uh, the PubMed, but mobile, so it kind of searches, um, searches uh, the PubMed database, so again, you can go in there, carry out searches, and you'll get results within there. I did try the share and export functions when I was looking at the other day, they didn't seem to work for some reason, so I don't know if this is, if this is continuing to be um, supported, but it is well worth perhaps just having a look at for your own, if, you, you know, if you're using PubMed a lot then uh, it's worth having a look at the mobile device because again it is totally free. EndNote, so again uh, here in Shah we've been moving over from Reference Manager to EndNote which uh, the rest of the university pretty much uses so there is uh, an app version of EndNote so people may not be aware of this so again you can create yourself an account uh, and save your references and access them via a mobile device. For Productivity, um, there's loads and loads of apps out there, but a, a good one is the 3030 app. So there's loads and loads of different ones. And what 3030 does is, is it, you start your day by putting in um, basically tasks of 30 minute kind of uh, duration, or you can change that. And it will kind of prompt you along. So you, you'll spend 30 minutes doing your email, and then it'll tell you 30 minutes to write on that paper, and then 30 minutes to do this. And of course, doesn't work that well if your kind of diary is already full of meetings, but, but if you have a day perhaps when you're working from home, um, then it might be more useful. But you can do things like pause, you can extend, you can decide to end a task early. And again, this is a sort of tool that will work for some people, not for all, but it is perhaps useful for some people who do work that way. And I know, I know some people who do work that way. Um, Slack has a tremendous amount of traction in the kind of the commercial sector and the creative industries, but some people are trying it in the university. I tried it with a few colleagues in, in the university, um, and it's very, very good for small team communication. It is treated as the antithesis to email. Um, it probably will just, if it ever took off and became really huge, it'd just become like email, another kind of thing around our neck. But it is well worth kind of looking at for perhaps small group work, especially people that may not be on campus. So, you know, um, uh, but I, I know if I started a business tomorrow and I had six employees, I would probably use Slack as my form of communication because it allows for those kind of quick interaction kind of conversations. It's a bit like Google Wave, but sadly Google Wave never kind of really took off. Um, the Evernote app is very good, so anyone who takes notes on their iPad 
or on their uh, Android device, um, or anyone who moves from taking paper notes and moves on to digital, then the Evernote is as good as you get because you can take all your notes, but you can also take photographs. So if you're at a conference, someone's talking, you take notes, and then a particularly good graph comes up, you put your device up, take a photograph, and it saves it within the notes as part of a scrapbook. You can then clip web pages to it, and you can even record it, I think it's now as audio, so you could even go and drop the audio on something and, and record it and take notes as well. So, um, so th there's a lot to it, and again, it is free, and then it will sync up with the desktop version. So it's one of these like Trello that's very good at, if you use it on the desktop and you've got a mobile device, it kind of makes sense that you put it on the mobile device. Finally, um, a really good web plugin for Firefox and Chrome, which has been around for years, I've used for years, is something called Readability. What Readability does is it takes any kind of normal web page, you can do this with a University of Sheffield web page, and when you click the plugin, it removes all the hyperlinks, it removes all the, the sidebars, it removes anything that will distract you reading the article, and it turns it into a lovely little kind of PDF. And when you click it on Chrome or Firefox, it will say, do you want to read now or read later? And if you've got a mobile device, it will sync up with your mobile device. And in effect, you can stockpile articles. So you can just keep saving, saving, saving. And then when you're on a long train journey, you get your mobile device app. They'll all be on there, like these PDFs. So these can be blog posts, they can be anything. But what it does is it just removes any form of distraction, any form of hyperlink and it turns it into a wonderful little PDF which you can actually print off as a nice PDF as well and I think when it does it always tells you how long the read is based on the average reading speed so you open it up and say 8 minutes and then you kind of feel oh 8 minutes isn't so bad but if I try and read it with all the hyperlinks in that becomes like tab 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 80 minutes so um, there are more videos on the mobile apps on that URL there but if you do a search for the Shah Vids YouTube channel um, there is lots and lots of uh, things here on browsing, on explain everything. Me and Dan Smith are in the process of making around 20 short videos explain, primarily for MDH students, um, kind of a lot of medical apps as well as kind of student apps. So um, I've actually kind of cut it short, which is kind of part of the course. I've got like a machine gun. So we've got some tea and we've got experts. So.